Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're back with the long-awaited follow-up to my HD Home Run Prime video and we're going to review today uh, the Seton Echo, which is a Windows Media Center extender. Uh, but before I get to that, I just want to tell you that Windows Media Center has really worked out to be the best solution uh, for the problem that I specified in my prior video, which was uh, Comcast scrambled all the channels I was able to pick up uh, over my TVs. Now, I'm paying for these channels, I have the cable service, but uh, they wanted to extract some more revenue from box rental fees, which I really just didn't want to pay for as a consumer. So uh, there was an alternative, which was getting an HD Home Run Prime, uh, picking up a cable card from the cable company, which is a uh, basically a means of decrypting those channels. And what the HD Home Run Prime does is takes that card, you put it in its little card slot, uh, it grabs all those encrypted cable channels over the cable wire, decrypts them, and shoots them out over Ethernet. And you can connect it to Windows Media Center, you can connect to PCs that uh, support uh, the DLNA format. Uh, even smart televisions can connect to the HD Home Run Prime and tune uh, over the local area network as opposed to tuning over cable. Works wonderfully, and uh, the Windows Media Center just proved to be the least restrictive way to get all of the things working and the easiest for uh, my wife and other members of the family who stopped by uh, to be able to use the televisions in the house, which was the ultimate goal. There are some great Linux solutions out there. Just It was just a little too complicated on the configuration and, and the ongoing maintenance, and this seemed to work out the best. So uh, what we've been doing is we have an old Xbox in one room, a new Xbox in another room, uh, but we had one television left that was lacking uh, the ability to easily tune channels. So what we did is we picked up the uh, Seton Echo, because I was just curious how these uh, Windows Media Center extenders work. So this is it. It's about the size of an Apple TV. Um, it doesn't have much to it. It's got an HDMI port on the back here, so you plug that into your television. It has a USB port for service, and I should add that my first Seton Echo arrived broken, and I had to uh, get a replacement uh, from Seton, so it was about a two-week delay in getting everything up and running. They did try to use this uh, port here, the USB port, uh, to service the device, but it just didn't seem to want to respond to anything. Uh, there's an optical audio out. Uh, there's Ethernet, and again, this is what I mentioned in the other video, you need to have this hardwired to your local area network. It's not going to work over Wi-Fi. It doesn't have, uh, you know, just the amount of bandwidth that these videos, uh, the HD video requires to really function properly. It just doesn't work with anything but regular good old Ethernet. And you got to make sure that even like the power line adapter stuff doesn't work. You've got to just run those wires, make sure you get everything hooked up correctly, and run with it that way, unfortunately. But uh, once you get that done, it's certainly worth it, in my opinion, at least. Uh, what I do like about the Seton versus the Xbox is that it consumes a lot less power because it's just powered via USB. Um, it is a 1.6 amp uh, uh, voltage on it, so it's a, well, 5 volts, 1.6 amps, but it's a little bit more than your standard USB port. Uh, those usually run at, you know, half, half an amp or 1 amp uh, out of your television, so you probably won't be able to power it off your TV USB, but uh, it does come with an adapter, and it doesn't consume all that much power, which is, uh, which is good. Um, I should add, though, that the, uh, <laughs> the little light here where it says Seton, this thing lights up. It doesn't stop, so you're always seeing their brand staring at you um, when you're trying to use the remote. Uh, this is the remote here. It isn't much. You know, it works. Uh, there was some, some consternation on some of the message boards about it. It's, you know, it's not bad, but I'm sure you can use uh, you know, one of those fancy universal remotes if you want to do that. Uh, when you boot it up, I should mention that, by the way, the configuration was easy. You turn it on, it tells you what its little code number is. Uh, you go down to your PC and uh, set it up for the Windows Media Center and you're off and running. Now, in my configuration, I have a laptop that just kind of runs with a lid down uh, in the basement here. That is what uh, basically coordinates all the video and all the channels. So what happens is, is that uh, the HD Home Run Prime over Ethernet shoots all of its stuff to the uh, Windows Media Center PC, and that in turn will send it to the proper device. So if I'm watching live television, it's kind of routing through the television, uh, through the uh, laptop first, then it goes to the extender, whether it's this one or the Xbox 360. Likewise, when it's recording TV shows, uh, those recordings record onto that laptop, and uh, the laptop will, of course, through the Windows Media Center in turn, uh, put that stuff onto your device. So uh, we'll take a look here at our recorded TV uh, section here. It's a little bit slower when you navigate versus the, um, uh, versus the Xbox, but it's honestly it's not bad I mean you're, you're buying this to watch television so um, it tends to, to work pretty well so uh, we can hit play here and it'll start up what I really like about Windows Media Center is that everything just syncs up so if I want something to record on my and I set it to uh, record on the PC or on my Xbox or some other thing uh, everything just works it's great and I like that <laughs> so uh, it's definitely something to uh, uh, keep in mind that you know there are some maybe some better solutions out there but none that are this easy in my opinion to set up and get working you might have other opinions so certainly share them I'd love to hear what you have to say about that um, if we go into the guide here of course we can just scroll through just like we could on the PC or on the Xbox 
uh, we can select the show we want to watch and it will uh, boot right up and we can uh, watch it live as we go. Haven't had any problems with it. It's actually been working really, really well. And there really isn't much more to see on this thing. The only thing I would actually uh, keep or let you know about is that there is some settings. You've got to install a little plug-in on the PC first. Uh, and then that will give you the ability to configure uh, the video settings on the CTON. When you plug it in, it's going to default to 720p. Uh, most of us have 1080p sets, so all you got to do is go into extras here, and you'll see a uh, CTON plug-in option here. You click that, you go to video, and you can set the, uh, uh, the resolution to native or 1080p or whichever your heart desires. So uh, pretty slick. Um, the only thing to keep in mind is that this does not work with Windows 8 Media Center. It only works with Windows 7. So, uh, you know, I, I think Windows 7 is better in many ways, and we can have that discussion at another time. Uh, so I would suggest if you're setting this up for the first time, you know, start off with a real basic Windows 7 set uh, with the Windows Media Center uh, version on there. Set it up, put it in your basement, just stick it somewhere and forget about it, and then uh, connect to it with all of your devices. So uh, this has worked really well for me, and I, I think I'm going to hang on to this. The only problem is, is that this is expensive. In fact, this probably costs as much as an Xbox does. So uh, you have to decide whether or not you need another Xbox. And sometimes it might just make sense to get one because the Xbox can do Netflix and HBO Go and all the other apps that are out there, plus all the gaming options. Uh, and you're going to spend you know, maybe the same as this, maybe a little bit more. These occasionally go on sale, but not too often. I'm not sure how much longer they're going to be around for, quite honestly. So uh, the Xbox might be a better option if you want to do more than just Windows Media Center extension. Um, but it works. It doesn't consume a lot of power. And... Uh, it'll get you up and running pretty quickly. So, so that's where we're at with all of this setup. The cool thing about the HD Home Run Prime is that it doesn't care what's connecting to it. So we're not, you know, the HD Home Run Prime will work with other stuff in the house. So if I bring in a DLNA device, as long as it's got a free tuner available, it will send video to that device. So just because we have Windows Media Center on doesn't mean we can't do other stuff too. So I'll keep experimenting a little bit more as we go. Um, but this is a great way to very uh, quickly and easily uh, get your Windows Media Center extended. There are other ones that have been discontinued. So Linksys has something called, the, I think it's the DMA 2100. Uh, they stopped making it, but you might be able to find it on eBay for maybe 80 bucks, 100 bucks, or something like that. There's some used ones. I saw some new ones. So uh, that one might be worth looking at. But CTON is making this. It's still, at least as of the time of this video, still being manufactured. So uh, there might be a little bit better support around it because it is not yet uh, discontinued. But this is the only current Windows Media Center extender beyond the Xbox 360. So uh, bear that in mind. I'd love to answer more of your questions about how I'm using the HD Home Run Prime. So leave those questions in the comments and we'll uh, take a look and see what we can answer for you. This is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching.